Hello, I'm Dr. Benjamin Norris from the Chemistry Department at Frostburg State University. In this video, we're going to go over how to identify redox reactions in organic chemistry. When you were studying general chemistry, you probably learned some ways to identify redox reactions in general chemistry, and specifically to identify what was being oxidized and what was being reduced. So here is a very simple kind of uh, redox equation that you might have seen in general chemistry, and one way that you could have figured out whether you had oxidation or reduction was by writing out the half reactions, and then making a judgment about the half reactions. And there is a possibility that when you were in general chemistry, that you learned the oil rig mnemonic device. Oxidation is loss, reduction is gain, and we're talking about electrons in both cases. And so you can identify the which half reaction corresponds to oxidation and which half reaction corresponds to reduction by figuring out what happens to the electrons. And so here is a case sodium is being converted into the sodium cation. In order for that to happen, sodium, sodium atoms need to lose an electron because the cation has one fewer electron. Okay. I also have this second half reaction where zinc cations are being converted into zinc metal and, whoops, E should not be added. And in this case, zinc cations need to pick up electrons to go back to being zinc metal. And so we can say that in this reaction, sodium is oxidized and zinc cations are reduced. This is also a really simple example because we could probably even look at the charge. Sodium going from neutral to positive charge, that's going to be on oxidation. Zinc going from positive charge to reduction has to gain electrons. But in complex redox reactions, uh, it might not be as obvious, and you would have to work out the entire half reaction to figure it out. Here is another example of a gen chem type question. This is the combustion of methane. And you probably already have a sense that combustion is an oxidation reaction, at least as far as the fuel is being is concerned. But I want to use this as an example of a second way that you may have used to identify oxidation and reduction, and that is by calculating oxidation numbers. And we can calculate oxidation, the oxidation number, or oxidation state, of each atom on the reactant, so each, each element on the reaction and product side. Let's make it a column for reactant, a column for product. Okay. So we're going to make count, we're going to identify the oxidation numbers. And in GenChem there was a way of determining the oxidation numbers that required you to look at the atom, pretend like it was made up of everything and it was ionic, and, and figure out where the electrons were, were going. And so, you know, we'd pretend, it, pretend methane was ionic, hydrogen all, all ion is almost always plus one, so carbon would be minus four. The hydrogen atoms plus one, and oxygen, um, while, while we would almost, while we'd have this rule, oxygen is almost always minus two, this is molecular oxygen. The, the oxidation number or oxidation state is, nine, is, is zero for, for elemental substances. So then we would look at the product side, and now I have carbon bound to oxygen. Two oxygens, the carbon needs to be plus four to balance that out. Hydrogen is still plus one. And oxygen now 
in both carbon dioxide and water, it's in a compound, so we would call it minus 2. And then we can identify the carbon as having been oxidized and the oxygen atoms as having been reduced. We can use a similar approach in organic chemistry where we might have a reaction where we are converting, say, a carboxylic acid into an alcohol. And since this video is part of a, a sequence and, and properties of alcohols, I'm going to use alcohols uh, for a lot of my um, examples, but not all of them. Right. And it's important here, I want to actually show all of the atoms in the structure. And I'm only going to calculate the oxidation state here for the position that changes, which is this carbon atom in the middle. And so, as I was saying before, what we do here is we pretend that this compound is ionic, that all the bonds are ionic, and the electrons are assigned to the atom with more electronegativity. And so what we would do, carbon-carbon uh, bonds break homolytically, carbon-oxygen bonds break heteroolytically, with the oxygen getting all of the electrons. Or, we can generalize that without having to pretend like we're breaking the molecule apart and saying oxidation state is plus one for n each bond to a more electronegative atom and we're minus one for each bond to a less electronegative atom and this can just handle just about everything and no change for each bond to an atom of the same element and that covers everything covers everything if I can spell. There we go. So that means that we can calculate the oxidation state of this carbon atom here. We have three bonds to oxygen, one bond to carbon, so three bonds to oxygen is plus three. The bond to carbon is no, has no impact. Right. Over here on this structure I have a bond to carbon, two bonds to oxygen and one bond, or two bonds to hydrogen and one bond to oxygen. So it's plus one for the bond to oxygen, but it's minus one for each bond to hydrogen, which is a minus one overall, and this is a reduction. And we can just use this process uh, quickly for any kind of thing we want to do. And so maybe I have an alcohol, and we're going to talk about a reaction where it gets converted into an aldehyde. Excuse me. You know, again, it might be beneficial to us to draw in all of the things that are here. Right? It sometimes is easy to forget about all of the implicit hydrogen atoms. But we have two hydrogens and an oxygen. Actually, we just did uh, this carbon atom in ethanol. In the aldehyde, I've got two bonds to hydrogen, one bond to oxygen. So that's actually plus one. And this is an oxidation. Let's talk about this reaction. Here is an addition reaction converting an alkene into an alcohol. Now, now both, alcohol, both carbon atoms have had something happen to them. So I feel a need to draw in all of the hydrogen atoms at each position. Let's show that carbon label too. All right. So draw in all the hydrogen atoms. Each carbon atom on ethene has two bonds to hydrogen. So each one has an oxidation state of minus two. We already know what the, this is minus one, that this carbon atom in ethanol is minus one. But this carbon atom over here we haven't calculated yet. It's got three bonds to hydrogen. Each one is minus one for each bond, so minus three. 
So this one's tricky. If we want to be really, really technical, carbon one is oxidized and carbon two is reduced. Carbon one is where the, the oxygen is attached. And carbon two is the other is the other carbon. But however, in terms of the net, right, there's actually no net oxidation or reduction because we had one carbon atom oxidized and another carbon atom. Where did this come from? There we go. Copy my minus two. Another carbon atom reduced by the same amount. So the total oxidation number for the two carbon atoms is minus four on the left and minus four on the right. So this is actually not an addition reactions in general are not considered redox reactions. So this approach here gives you uh, a tool to assess whether an oxidation or a reduction is happening or whether the reaction is not a, a net change either way. This tool is valuable because as we learn reagents that might be oxidizing agents or reduction agents, if you can identify an ox the reaction as an oxidation, then you know you need to provide reagents that are oxidizing agents and vice versa. If you identify the reaction as a reduction, then you know you need to provide reducing agents and not some other kind of reagent. Thank you for watching.